In this video, I'd like to start walking through the entire process of trying to create a part from start to finish. So this piece here, this bracket that hangs on the wall and something hooks onto it, um, this is what I'd like to walk through the process of trying to create. So hopefully what you can see, I'm going to roll back all the way from the end to the beginning of the part. And you can see that it started out as just a rectangular primitive. Once we've got that rectangular primitive, we'll go ahead and start adding a tapered cylinder or a cylinder that has a draft onto it, and we'll go from there. So let's just go ahead and start it from the beginning. I'm going to go back to my on shape. I'm going to create a new document. I'll go ahead and call this mounting bracket. And I can see I accidentally put an April R in there, so I can change it right up here. All right, so how are we gonna get started? The first thing I need to decide is, do I wanna model it the way that it actually sits in real life? Um, so I can start on the right plane, the front plane, the top plane, that really is all kind of up to you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start my sketch on this front plane, and I'm gonna take a look at it as it's currently sitting. So now that I'm in this sketch, I'm going to click on the front view, and I wanna create a rectangle that's something similar to what the bracket's supposed to look like in height and width. Um, something similar to this and if it's not right then I can come back in and I can fix this later so I'll go ahead and finish sketch I'll put it back into isometric and I now need to give it a depth so I will select extrude I'm gonna pick my shape and I think that's a little bit thick for the plate so I'm gonna push this a little bit back and I'm just doing conceptual modeling right now I'm not worried about any dimensions I just want to see what it looks like but I can come back in and I can change the dimensions and all later Okay, great. So I have just the main body by itself, and these planes are really in my way right now. I only needed them for the beginning, and if I need them, I can turn them back on, but for right now, I want to turn them off. So I'm going to come over here to the side where it says top and front and right, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the origin off as well. Um, so now I can cleanly look at the part without those planes there. Like I said, I can turn them back on if I need to. All right, so now I want to go ahead and put that cylinder on the top face or the front face, and I want to bring it out. So a new sketch on this front face. I am gonna go ahead and click on front to square it up to me. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit and I'm gonna draw my circle. So my circle is supposed to be ish, kind of around here. So I'm just gonna place it and I'm gonna start trying to decide about proportionally what I want that diameter to look like. Um, that's not bad. So if not, I can kind of move it around, I can change its size, but what if I do want it exactly in the middle? Is there a way to do that? Yeah, there's lots of ways, and I'm just gonna show you one of them. I'm gonna grab my line tool, and I'm gonna go from corner to corner. And geometrically, that has now bisected this in half. I can now grab my little dot, and as I move that little dot, I can move it until it actually finds the middle. So I can find endpoints pretty easy, and I can also find middles. Awesome, so that's now locked into place. I can tell you there is something a little bit weird about that, because you put this line on, when I go to extrude it, it sees it sometimes as multiple phases, and sometimes that causes me problems. So this thing I'm going to, I'm going to do here isn't essential, but it really does help me out sometimes. I'm going to click on this line, I'm going to right click on it, and I'm gonna to go to construction. When I do that, it'll turn it into kind of a dash dot dash. Um, that will hide it from any of the 3D features. So it's still there for me, and will keep my circle always locked into the middle, but it will hide it from the rest of it. So again, that's not essential to do. Um, sometimes you just have to pick on two different parts of the circle instead of being able to just pick on one, but regardless. So I'll go back into isometric. I'm gonna finish that sketch and we're going to extrude it. So I'll pick my little circle and then I gotta decide how much that's gonna come out. And that doesn't look right, why is that gray? I'm gonna close that and try it again. So extrude, pick my circle, and there we go. I'm not quite sure why that was great, but whatever. So I know that it's supposed to come out about that far-ish. Again, I'll change it later if I'm not happy with it. And then how much of a draft is it supposed to have? Well, when I click on draft, draft always goes out first, or at least for me, it's always gone out first. I'm gonna go ahead and say, I don't want it to draft out. I want it to draft in. And same thing, I don't have that white arrow to drag it in to see it dynamically. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of play around with this. So five six 
Um, I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll go ahead and accept that. So, so far I have the plate. I have a truncated cone, uh, a cone that doesn't have a top. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and poke the two holes in there. I do have a whole tool specifically, uh, but that's really for doing fancy holes and some of that. If I'm just making holes by themselves, I'll just leave it alone. And I'm just gonna do it with circles. So I'm gonna do a new sketch and I'm gonna do it on the top surface. I'm gonna go ahead and square it up, zoom out just a little bit, and I'll draw my two circles. So one of them's gonna be down here and one of them's gonna be down here, but I really wanna be in the center. Is there an easy way to get them exactly in the center? Well, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna grab my line tool, I'm gonna find the middle and go to the middle, say escape line, and I can just drag them and link them onto it. If they don't wanna link on by themselves, that's what this tool is for, the coincident tool. It allows you to click two specific places and it will make that happen. So I can then say, you are going to lock on to there and it'll do that for you. So awesome, so I now have that circle and this one directly in the middle of the part. I am gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my line, right click on it and make that a construction line. Okay, so I now have these two circles, but they're not really even from side to side. They're not necessarily even the same diameter. I can fix that too. I'm gonna use this equals tool. If I come up to the equals tool, I can pick on two objects and now they're gonna be the exact same size to each other, even without a dimension tool. So now whatever happens to one will happen to both of them. That's pretty darn cool. So is there a way to then get them to be the same distance on both ends without dimensioning? Sure. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my line tool and I'm gonna put another one that's going to bisect the part vertically. And same thing, I like to go ahead and make it a construction line. So what is that tool for? It's for symmetry. I have a tool up here that's called symmetric. If I click that tool, I can pick one object and a second object and then the line that they're going to be symmetric on. And then as soon as I do that, let me escape out of it, whatever happens to one will happen to the other. So now not only are their dimensions um, or diameters equal to each other, they're also a mirror image of each other across that line of symmetry. So that's all pretty cool. All right, so how big should the holes be? Um, so these are the mounting holes. You know, I gotta think about proportionally how big of a screw's gonna go in there and so on. I'm gonna say that right now, currently, that looks good enough. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the sketch. I'll put it into isometric and grab my extrude tool. I'm gonna pick my two circles so I can pick both of them at the same time. I'm gonna select remove so it will automatically go ahead and push them through. And because they are gonna go all the way through, all the time, every time, I'm gonna go ahead and change it from blind to through all and say okay. All right, we're really getting there. I now have the plate. I've got the truncated cone on there. I've got my mounting holes in. I'm now gonna go ahead and take care of that slot that needs to be into the top of it. There's a lot of different ways to do that, but the problem is I cannot do a new sketch on something that's not flat. Well, I don't really wanna do that sketch on there anyways. It would be kind of at an angle. So I'm actually gonna do the sketch on this top surface. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the top and I'm gonna draw a rectangle out here. It really doesn't matter if I'm perfectly in the middle. I'm just gonna draw it out here. I'm gonna decide how much of that I wanna cut off. So I'm gonna make a little dip in there that's about that big. If I want it to be perfectly from side to side, um, I can do that same thing. I can grab my line tool. I can say from middle and I'm gonna have to project that, but right now this is gonna be good enough. I'm not worried about it being perfectly in the middle. The other one side was really kind of concerned about, but this is really kind of more up to me. Well, maybe I do want it to be thicker in the back than it is the front, or I want it to be thicker in the front than it is the back, so it may not be in the center anyways. But regardless, we'll go ahead and finish our sketch. I'm going to put it back into isometric, and we're going to extrude that rectangle as a remove. So now I can decide how much I want that to actually cut down into the part. Um, that looks good there. I really don't want to go past halfway. If I'm past halfway, I really start taking a lot of the structural integrity of that cone shape out of there. Um, so maybe about yay much. Something's just supposed to hook onto here uh, and not slide off at the end. So that looks awesome. 
Alright, so I've got everything done. I've got my cone, I've got the cut, the holes, the plate, and I'm ready to start doing my edge treatment. Alright, so let's grab our fillet tool. I'm going to pick one of the corners and I'm going to go ahead and play around with that until I figure out how much I want to actually round that off. Um, I like that much. That looks good, but it might not look good on all four of them. So let's go ahead and see now what that looks like or translates to the other corners. All right, I'm happy with that, and if not, I can go ahead and continue pulling it in. Um, I can go back out with it. That's really kind of up to me. This is just a, a design consideration. So I'm happy with that. I'll go ahead and select OK, put it back into isometric, and then I'm gonna go ahead and chamfer those two holes. So I'll grab my chamfer tool, pick the two holes, and again, I don't have that dynamic transition to be able to see it, so I'm just gonna keep rotating the part around until I can see what I want. Um, so we're gonna say it's a countersink screw that's supposed to fit into there, uh, and maybe four millimeters. You're gonna have to play around with yours because since I don't have any hard dimensions on the main part, um, the rest of these are just visual dimensions. So I like that. Okay, good. Um, I'm also gonna put a boss in between the cone shape and the plate to make it a little bit stronger when I'm 3D printing this part. So I actually wanna give a little bit more structural material for where the plate blends into the cone shape. So that looks good, maybe just a little bit more. I don't wanna come all the way out to the edge because I'm gonna fill at this outside edge right there. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so I've got the corners done. I've got the holes chamfered. I've got a new boss in between the cylinder and the plate. I'll go ahead and do a fillet all the way around the top edge. And because this is a loop now with these being tangented, it should automatically pick the whole thing when I pick that corner. And it does. Uh, I don't want it to be near that much. Plus those two fillets are overlapping. So I just want to do it a little bit just to kind of soften that edge a little bit. I'm not going to do it to the back edge because the back edge is going to sit on the wall, um, hang on the door, or whatever, so I want to leave that one completely flat. Um, also when I'm 3D printing and I'm probably going to print it um, something in this kind of orientation, um, so I'm going to keep the bottom flat anyways. Okay, so the rest of it is just kind of decorative. Uh, I am going to fill with this out so that when I do hang something, it actually rolls whatever I've got into kind of the center of it, so I, I would like to... Go ahead and put a nice foot here and here. And I actually am not that unhappy with those sizes. Maybe a little bit less, so I, I like that. Um, so I guess those weren't just decorative. Those are really there for function. Um, and I guess these actually have a little bit of function too. So again, as soon as I click this edge, it should automatically pick the whole thing. Oh no, I don't want it near that big. Um, so something just enough to kind of soften over that edge. And I'm happy with that. And then the last one is just so that this isn't so pointy or such a hard transition between there. So I'll just kind of fill that one off. Sure, looks good. All right, so let's go all the way back to the beginning. So I'm gonna grab my end part and I'm gonna pull it back up. So we started with the plate. We then put on our truncated cone. I then went ahead and popped the two holes into there. We then went ahead and put that main cut that was into the cone. We then started working on all of our different edge treatments, the chamfers, the fillets, all those things until we were finished and finalized with it. Now, if there's ever anything that I don't like, maybe the full length of it, it needs to be just a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, I can come back into any of those sketches and start making changes. So if I want to make it a little bit longer, maybe just a little bit skinnier, I can do all that and my part should update. I want the holes to be closer towards the ends, then I gotta find the holes. But one easy thing that I can do is if I kinda zoom in a little bit and I click the hole and right click it, as soon as I do that, I can edit the sketch that made that or I can edit the feature that made that. So that's really kinda cool. So either one of the holes, as soon as I click on it and right click it, I can say that I wanna edit that sketch, it'll hop me right into it. I can say I want you to be a little bit further out and I can finish that sketch. If I'm not happy with the cone, I can pick the cone, right click on it, and I can edit maybe the extrusion, and I want it to have a little bit less of a taper to it, a little bit more of a taper to it. So sometimes it's easier to pick things out in the field than it is to try to pick things over in the browser bar. So regardless, I'm now ready to show this to the client. I wanna see if they're as happy with it as I am. 
So we'll go ahead and say it's supposed to be orange. So we'll change this color to orange. I'll hide my appearance and then I'm gonna get rid of those black lines, shaded without edges. And then I'm gonna put it into turn on perspective. So now I can go ahead and get screen captures of it. I can get some photos of it and I can show that to the client to see if we're on the same page to whether they're happy with it. And once they are happy with the rendering or this three dimensional model that I have on my screen, then I'm ready to start sending it to my 3D printer and start creating it and see if the, if the model is actually functional. Um, to be able to do that, I'm probably gonna have to start putting some real dimensions on it. Um, or I'm gonna have to at least put some kind of scale onto it when I send it to the 3D printer. But there you go, you've gone from beginning to end of creating a 3D model. Awesome.